Good morning, sister friends. Welcome to Breakfast Bites. It's Monday, June 22nd, 2020. This morning, we're continuing our study of how Christian author Alison Bakke made some major changes in her life to help her maintain a right relationship with God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Allison shared this in her book, Setting Boundaries for Women, Six Steps to Saying No, Taking Control, and Finding Peace. I take special joy in the concept of finding peace, which is where we are today. I know I like to kid around a lot, sister friends, but I really do have to say, seriously, it's been my personal experience that many women I know who are troubled, no matter what the cause of the drama in their life, the confusion, the pain, they're troubled most of all because they just can't seem to find peace. Allison used the acronym SANITY to help her remember the six steps that helped her find her own peace. Today we'll focus on the letter T, which stands for Trust the Voice of the Spirit. Let's read John fourteen twenty six. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. That was in the New King James, Let's read that passage again from the message, the Bible in contemporary language. I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. The friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. He will remind you of all the things I have told you. I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. Peace. Isn't that beautiful? Let's go back now to what Allison said the letter T stands for. Trust the voice of the Spirit. I think many women may have to do a lot of chewing on the concept of a quest for peace that starts with trust. Why? Because face it, girls, from the time we were teenagers, many of us put our trust in people who let us down. There might have been a boy you fell for in high school who was all about his own raging hormones and not into you for anything lasting. Or maybe a husband later on who let you down. For some women I know, trust issues started with their father or their stepdad who just didn't know how to be a daddy. If a particular person in your life or a friend's life came to mind when I mentioned those few trust scenarios, and there's lots more. I'm not saying any of those people were bad people. They were just human and flawed. So what I want to do right now, today, is to focus on that word quest, the quest for peace, true peace, which starts with trust. But we can't get it by trusting in things or people of this earth. The kind of trust that results in peace, sisters, comes only from God. Turn with me now to Matthew 14, 22 through 33. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. 
So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when Peter saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I read a really interesting commentary on Matthew 14, 22 through 33. You know, Jesus calls Peter out for not having had enough faith, but hey, at least he stepped out of the boat. None of the other ones did that. The other thing was that, okay, so they thought he was a ghost, but Peter's the one that said, Lord, if it's you, call out to me. Bid me to come to you, right? Why do you think the others weren't really sure who Jesus was? The same commentary that I read asked the question, do you know that one of the traditional ways federal agents have been trained to spot counterfeit money? What does this have to do with Jesus in the boat and Peter in the water? Stay with me here, girls. Agents are put in a room for days and required to count real money. Then after several days of counting real money, over and over, all day, every day, a phony bill is slipped in. More often than not, the agent trainee will spot the fake money. Why? Not because they've been trained with counterfeit money at all, but because they've become so familiar with real money. This is the kind of relationship we need to have with Jesus. We need to be so familiar with him, we could recognize him immediately. In that scenario, in that passage of scripture in Matthew 14, at first it was, who is that? Is it a ghost? And they were afraid. But Peter said, is it you, Lord? And if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And then when Peter got out of the boat, he was focused on the power. But when he took his eyes off Jesus, he's focused on the problem. We do that, sisters. Jesus is the source of our power and our peace. Flip back with me now to Matthew 8, 23 through 27. This was an earlier experience with the disciples in the boat. Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he, Jesus, was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, do you see the difference there? There's two different scenarios in a boat with Jesus on rough water. But in the first scenario, they ask, who is this man? In the second scenario, they ask, or they say, truly, this must be the Son of God. What's the difference? How did they get from not understanding to totally understanding? They spent time in the company of Jesus. I don't know about you, but what I know that I need is to spend so much time with Jesus that just like Peter, I would know him in the fog. I would call out to him in a stormy sea. I would say, Jesus, if that's you, ask me to come to you. That really did take great faith for Peter to step out of that boat when nobody else did. 
I want to ask you, I want to encourage you to find that kind of peace in Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And we thank you for all the many blessings in our life. Lord, we want to pray for our sister friends, for everyone watching this this morning who may have problems and troubles or just a heavy heart, Lord. We pray for the future of the Cowboy Church of Orange County, and we ask your blessings upon each and every person who hears me this morning and who's worshiping together by watching this video. These things we ask in Jesus' name, and all God's sister friends said, Amen.